Blockchain is to the next 150 years what the combustion engine was to the last 150 years. One changed the way we transported things in the physical world. Blockchain changes the way we transport things in the digital world. Anthony Pompliano. Why is everybody so excited about blockchain? Well, my name is Kyle Newcomb, and I'm a grade 12 student at Abbey Park High School. Today, I'll be talking about blockchain, specifically how it can be used in the stock market to even the starting line and increase transparency. So over the last few years, taking many business courses, as well as completing the Business Specialist High School's major program, just paying attention to finance in general, I've learned a lot about the financial markets that exist and operate in today's world. And as anyone who's perhaps seen some movies or TV shows about finance will likely tell you, there's a lot of inequality there in terms of opportunities for individual versus institutional investors. And I believe that blockchain is the solution for the 21st century. So at a very high level, blockchain is a decentralized, open, and electronic ledger system that allows users to transact in a, obviously a financial manner in a decentralized and permissionless way. So essentially what happens is that new transactions are broadcast out to the network and then grouped into blocks by other connected users and then verified and added to the chain of previous blocks, hence the name blockchain. So to perhaps explain blockchain a little better, I'm going to compare it to how a traditional payment processor to, uh, such as Visa works. So if you go to a store, any store, and use a Visa card at that store and transact there, that transaction will be sent to Visa and they will have to verify it. So obviously they'll add it to their own private ledger during that process. And then once the verification is complete, that approval is broadcast back to the store. Now, blockchain obviously works very different. So I'm a, if, I'm a user's, if I'm a user on a blockchain network wishing to transact on that network, what I will do is I will broadcast that new transaction out to the network. Then in the specific case of Bitcoin, as mentioned, these new transactions will be grouped into blocks by other users. And then a mathematical solution to the next valid block must be found by the users. In Bitcoin's case, that's using very, very complex cryptographic hash puzzles basically super hard math for computers. Now say this user here is the first to come to that mathematically valid solution. They will broadcast that new block to the rest of the network. And then the network will come to consensus about this block. And then if they approve it, they will add it to their own copy of the blockchain or ledger. Notice how everybody is involved in this program, in this process. Now saying all this, I do need to make one very important distinction before moving on. Blockchain and cryptocurrency, despite being used together, are in fact two very different things. So blockchain is the ledger system that I've been talking about, while cryptocurrency is the actual currency that you buy, such as Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, et cetera. So while cryptocurrency is decentralized in part thanks to blockchain, blockchain on its own can actually be used within a centralized system, which is perhaps why many banks and financial, financial institutions are exploring or using blockchain today, such as JP Morgan and Citibank in the United States, as well as Scotiabank and RBC here in Canada. Now to talk more specifically about blockchain in the stock market, I'm gonna use the New York Stock Exchange as my example, because it's perhaps the most well-known stock exchange globally. Now the New York Stock Exchange's transactions are actually validated in data centers at Mawa, Carteret and Secaucus, New Jersey. These are the centralized points that all transactions flow through. Now, for a blockchain to be effectively implemented, two key things need to be in place, consensus and distribution. Consensus, in this case, is actually very easy since a single organization is validating the transactions, the New York Stock Exchange. The problem, and where a major roadblock exists today, is distribution. In order for a blockchain to be effective, anyone needs to be able to freely connect to the network and start maintaining their own copy of the blockchain. However, in order to directly connect to the NYSE today, you need their ARCA membership. And according to the NYSE's website, quote, membership is available to registered and new US-based broker dealers who obtain a self-regulatory organization, SRO, and have an established connection to a clearing firm. Individual investors are not eligible. So right off the bat, this is a huge disparity in opportunity already for individual versus institutional investors. Now, say this barrier is lessened or eliminated in the future, what would the blockchain actually look like within the stock market? Well, it is important to note that blockchain has never been used with as, within as large a system as the New York Stock Exchange, and it's not entirely clear how it would look. 
But it is possible that something similar to the Ethereum blockchain will develop, a multi-asset blockchain. So in this case, there would be an underlying asset such as ETH, the cryptocurrency, in the case of the Ethereum blockchain, and in the New York Stock Exchange's case, this underlying asset would be the US dollar. And then there would be other assets built on top of this. So in Ethereum's case, that would be ERC-20 tokens, such as Tether, USDT, the Graph, Uniswap, Chili's, and Chainlink. Whereas in the New York Stock Exchange's case, these would be the shares of the companies that are being traded, such as Square, Best Buy, DoorDash, General Motors, and Verizon. Now, it is important to note that because of the size of a stock exchange, there would more than likely be more than one of these blockchains, perhaps one for each industry sector. Possibly a more promising option though is blockchain sharding. So this is where the blockchain is split into separate partitions, each with their own data. Now, currently it's in early testing phases within the Ethereum ecosystem, but the benefits so far have proved to be improved scalability and low latency, both vital traits for a successful stock exchange. Now, perhaps the best use of shards would be to have each shard or a small collection of shards represent the shares of a company being traded. And this would also make it much easier to be a user connected to the network since you would only have to interact with the shards that you are actively trading instead of the entire blockchain as a whole, meaning you have to process much less data in order to successfully transact on the network. Now, regardless of, ex of its exact final form, blockchain does have some excellent potential uses. And to explain the main benefit of these uses, I'm going to use possibly the most well-known financial market story in recent memory, the January 2021 GameStop short squeeze. Now, I am aware of all of the later price action, but for this example, I'm specifically teeing up January 2021. Now, for those who aren't aware, GameStop is a brick and mortar physical retail chain. They also own EB Games, by the way, that sells video games, consoles, and accessories to the general public. And you can see why during the pandemic, this is not the most ideal business model, especially as video games become increasingly digitized. Now, GameStop hasn't been doing the best for the last number of years, but as is usually the case in, in investing, there are investors who saw both sides of the coin. Individuals such as Keith Gill, as well as institutional investors such as Michael Burry saw deep fundamental value within the company, whereas a lot of hedge funds did not. And they were betting against the price of GameStop stock with what are called short positions. So to quickly explain short positions, Say I'm a fund who wants to short a stock. I'm betting that the price will go down. What I will do is I will find someone who owns the stock and borrow it from them. Then I will sell it into the market at whatever the current price is, say it's $100. Then I will buy it back at hopefully a lower price since I'm shorting, say $90. And then I'll return it to the original holder and keep that extra money to myself. In this case, it's around $10. There are other fees, a little bit of interest involved, but this is the general idea. Now, the short interest in GameStop was so high that approximately 140% of the public float was shorted. What this means is that within the publicly available pool of shares, some were borrowed and then sold multiple times, leading to this number to be over 100%. This made it obviously a prime target for a short squeeze where investors drive up the price of a stock to very high prices where, to squeeze out the short sellers and make them buy back the stock at very high prices where they will sustain significant losses. Now, in this particular case, this short squeeze was organized mostly by individuals online who wanted to get back at financial institutions for what they saw as gross mismanagement, especially coming out of 2008. Now, as you may have heard, this short squeeze was hugely successful. GameStop was trading between $15 and $21 for all of December 2020, but it hit an all-time high close of $347.51 on January 27, 2021, a gain of over 1,600% versus a month earlier on December 28th. This is precisely uh, where blockchain comes in, because if a blockchain had been in place during this event, transparency would have been greatly increased. It would have been much easier to come to conclusions about positions in the market, specifically short positions, and especially when over 100% of the public float has been shorted, which in my opinion should be illegal. Now, personally, I believe shorting is a valid market function, 
companies engaged in fraud, gross mismanagement, or no planning for a sustainable future certainly deserve to have investors betting against them, but just not at the rates seen with GameStop. A blockchain would have also allowed investors all the access they needed to real-time data to hopefully make much smarter investing decisions. And this would have left much fewer people holding the bag, so to speak, when the price began to decline after the initial positive price action. Further benefits of blockchain include tampering resistance due to the number of copies being maintained, as well as immediate disclosure of positions by a simultaneous updating of the chain. This simultaneous updating of the chain would have also eliminated macro delay disparity. Currently, stock quotes, which include prices, can be delayed up to 15 or 20 minutes, depending on the exchange, for casual investors following along from home, a major disadvantage. Now, here's a couple of really great quotes from some investment personalities I really respect. Jamal Palihapitiya, the CEO of Social Capital, says regarding blockchain, quote, you do eliminate an enormous amount of inequality in the system because you can actually get real transparent pricing, unquote. And David Sachs, the co-founder uh, and general partner of Craft Ventures, says, quote, every type of possession that relies on title should eventually be blockchain, unquote. This actually includes everything from stocks to intellectual property to land titles, as a matter of fact. The key takeaway here is that blockchain is a fundamental equalizer with wide use cases. Access to information is completely democratized and disadvantages are eliminated as a result. Now, don't get me wrong, blockchain is certainly not a be all end all solution to the problems that exist within today's world. Just as an example, all cryptocurrencies have a combined market cap of 2.28 trillion US dollars as of May 13th, 2021. Whereas the New York Stock Exchange alone, just one exchange, trades companies worth a combined $22.9 trillion, over 10 times greater. But with record numbers of individual investors participating in the market, 19.5% of US equity trading volume was done by individuals in 2020, and the importance of said market to our everyday lives, I think it's imperative that we keep the system running at its best, which in my opinion is a system that encourages inclusion, transparency, and true investing in companies to create in our world. That's the market I want to enter. The publicly traded corporation is a more important entity than ever, especially when it comes to pressing global is issues, such as the pandemic, green energy and climate change, biomanufacturing, and the future of our world. Everyone, not just rich investors in their glass towers, should be able to back companies they believe in and invest in their own future and the future of our planet. Thank you.